Our next speaker is a land user consultant at SAPMI Parliament in Sweden. He's also a digital map specialist. Please welcome Thomas Kumonen. Joo, kiihto jatnak. Pore peegbe puhe, käte mulle piihto antra serki reinet vamma. Hi everyone, I'm Thomas Kumonen. Um, uh, I'm very delighted to be invited to this conference. Uh, these are hot topics, so to speak. Uh, the place where we're on, at the, uh, where where we are at the moment, is Luleå. The name comes comes from the Lule and Northern Sami word of Lulle or Luleå, which is the south, roughly translated southeastern. These are winter pastures for uh, reindeer herding districts that are have their summer pastures up in uh, Padjelanta and Sarek and the great uh, UNESCO World Heritage. Uh, enough about that. Everyone here is clear on what pastoralism is and pastoral culture. Everyone has a good knowledge about it. Oh, great. I have 10 minutes to try to explain it. Great. Um, uh, the, the, the quote here is from Frank Orton, and I'm sorry for the translation. Uh, Ombudsman, I don't know if there is an English word for it. If you have any Swedish-speaking person, then... Ah, whatever. Uh, he, he, this quote is, is uh, from 1992. Uh, and really represents what it's like even today. Uh, but now you can exchange the common Swede with the common European. Because nowadays, between the conflict in Ukraine and the IRA in USA, we are locked in a, in a bear trap. And no one knows about us, unfortunately. Um, this is, of course, as I said, this is a part of Sápmi. It's the northern part of Norway, northern part of Sweden, northern part of Finland, and the Russian Peninsula. This is what we call the Sámi land. Uh, but enough about that, I have no time to explain it. A little bit about culture and cultural heritage. I will be predominantly talking about reindeer herding, uh, because reindeer herding is uh, a part of a living cultural her heritage. And when you raise a lavo, uh, our traditional way of, of living, you start with three sticks. And these can be represented by the material, the material, and the biological. So where you have our languages, the livelihoods, you have hunting, gathering, you have reindeer herding, you have uh, traditional handicrafts, for example, and then you have us in the landscape. And by taking away one of these sticks, you kill the culture. You kill the basis for the culture. Uh, reindeer herding districts in Sweden uh, covers roughly 55% of the uh, administrative uh, area uh, and is divided into 51 districts. 33 of these are mountainous. They have their summer pastures uh, up in, above the tree line and their winter pastures, pastures down in the boreal forest. And then you have 10 forest uh, reindeer herding districts. They are predominantly below the tree line in the boreal forests. And then you have eight uh, districts of concession in the Tornev Valley. Uh, I will take one example just so you can see the scale that we're working on or what the reindeer needs and what pastoralism really is. You follow the reindeer you follow the herd, and you don't, you don't transform the earth to give you what you want. You live from the earth, from what the earth itself can produce for you. Uh, so this is one, one uh, district, it's Gabna, it's uh, in, in the north of, of, uh, of Sweden. You have uh, the town of Kirna, the yellow dot there in the middle. Uh, so it's between the Torne River and Kirna as a city. And during spring, uh, the year begins, of course, when the calves are born. They are born in May. Uh, it's uh, above the tree line. Uh, and then comes pre-summer, then it's up in the high mountainous areas. The, reindeer, the, the mountainous reindeer actually does in the same manner that the reindeer did when the great ice uh, melted many thousands of years ago. It follows the border of the ice because that's where you find the most... Uh, nutrient greens, and the, and the reindeer uh, feeds on these greens, uh, uh, roughly around 250 different types of plants, depending on what phase of their growth they're in. And then in the high uh, mountainous areas during summertime, and then back to pre-autumn and autumn, here you, the reindeer goes into rut in the middle of September, and prior to that, we as reindeer herders are supposed to, to take uh, the slaughter, of course, because the male reindeer is at its biggest at the moment. Um, and then comes winter, pre-winter and winter, and then we go back to uh, the way we handled the landscape prior to, uh, well, colonization and, and modern times. It's called the Sita system. 
Uh, people often think about the northern Sweden as sort of the great wilderness, but it's not at all. It's a culturally uh, graced landscape. It's used for thousands of years. And we had our own way of, of, of uh, dealing with this. It was called the Sita system or the family group system. So it was not at all a terra nullius back in, in the 1600s. We already had a sort of, we had our own laws, we had our own way of governing the areas and the different families within, uh, within the, the, the landscape. Uh, take notice of the black border down in the southeast. It's called the agro border. It was drawn in 1891. Uh, when it was drawn, uh, everything west of it was supposed to be for Sami use only. And then came eight years later, they started mining in LKB. Back then it was to save Sweden or to bring Sweden into industrialization. And what we're seeing today with the green transition, it's not at all. We're not supposed to save Sweden, but now we're supposed to save the world or Europe. Uh, and pre-spring, of course, the reindeer herd uh, goes uh, further west uh, towards the, the, the calving grounds. Uh, so in reality, the reindeer flows through the landscape, and reindeer husbandry actually manages a complex world based on a cohesive landscape perspective. And the reindeer is semi-domesticated. It's not at all like a cow or a sheep. Uh, it's domesticated to the point that we can work with them. But at the same time, it, it ha we have kept so many of their biological uh, sort of as a prey. They are supposed to go for, for better uh, pastures when the pastures are locked. They're supposed to escape uh, dangers like predators or uh, something else. It's collecting resources, different places at different times, and, and of course avoids infrastructure. I will take you through, uh, unfortunately, the county of Westerbotten. I don't have a map of, of Norrbotten when it comes to this. We're going to travel back 100 years in time and to see what has happened through the years. But first, a Sami landscape pers perspective and what controls the reindeer are these five pieces of the cake. It, it's the reindeer herder, it's the pasture, it's the predators, it's topography, and it's weather. And working with a semi-domesticated reindeer and with weather, of course, time doesn't mean anything to it all. Um, people usually say that Sami are difficult to work with because you don't know when they're going to, sh to uh, come to the meetings or if they're able to come to the meetings. You ask them, can you be there at that time? We'll see. Perhaps. <laughs> depends on the weather, depends on the reindeer. Uh, but these are the five cakes that, that sort of uh, rule the lives of a pastoral, uh, a pastoral culture, uh, uh, in a pastoral culture and, and Sami reindeer herding. And I want to go back to 1987 because this is key. What is the sustainable development? Back in 87, we all agreed on that it's a development that, needs the, that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And as I said, County of Esterbotten, 1915, uh, problems for reindeer herding was agriculture, it was villages and towns with loose dogs, it was predators, of course. Uh, roads, railroads, hydropower, but the roads back then, there were cow trails. They were not at all the E4s and the E10s and everything that you see today. And we go to 1950, agriculture, villages, towns, and predators are on their way down. But at the same time, the number of roads, railroads, hydropower, mines, and logging is on the way up. And I put uh, mechanized forest industry within uh, there because here you have a, a, a transition to what we're seeing today with big clear cuts and where you turn, up, turn around the soil, uh, which has actually killed off around 70% of the lichen-rich areas in 70 years. And lichen, ground lichen and forest lichen are key for reindeer survival during winter because the reindeer, uh, it changes its metabolism two times a year, one for the green period and one for the winter. So it can actually find nutrients in the lichen during winter time, but those pastures are gone. Or, or depleting or, 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 or being transformed into something else. And then we have 2015. Agriculture, villages and towns are on the same level, but at the same time, the number of predators, forest industry, roads, railroads, hydropower, mine, wind power, tourism, dog sledding, snowmobiling, hunting and fishing are on this going straight up. And you can see it in the policies that are being made at the moment. Uh, the Northern Sweden is pushing for a 200% in tourism. Uh, and with the conflict in Ukraine, now there's supposed to be, we're going into NATO. We're going to have military everywhere. And plus, we're going to need more mines to build more wind, wind power. And when we build more mines, we need, need more wind power because the mines takes a lot of energy. And this has led to what I call the reindeer herders catch-22, or, uh, yeah, catch-22. Because if you're going to, to uh, maintain or sort of work to try to save the landscape and the reindeer, you're supposed to be sitting in meetings 
often unpaid, often without uh, any help from any, any lawyer or anything. You're supposed to know your own rights. But at the same time, while sitting in all these meetings, you're of course hurting, you're hurting the reindeer and the landscape by not being with them. Uh, I think my time is up, so I just want to, it's very hard, I'm sorry, it was, I feel like a machine gun up here, <laughs> trying to, <laughs> but, but with those words and, and a quote from, from Sixth and Swanee is, uh, is one of the elders in our neighboring district, he said that people usually manage somehow, but the animals and the reindeers, I worry about them. Thanks a lot, and I, and I really want you to visit um, our, the Sami Parliament's webpage and the Sami Information Center's webpage for more information, or you'll, you'll have the chance to ask me a question as well when I'm sitting here. So thanks. Kiitos, Etna. Kiitos, Etna. Well, a most interesting machine gun, anyhow, Thomas. So thank you so much.